pleaded with the government to change their position, he stated in a document. These doctors are coming forward now, and they're saying that, I'm just going to call them the federal initial organizations, that they knew the problem. They just weren't being honest with everyone. And I, I, I believe it's true. He says that the truth is that these people are dead, and there's no chance to save them. At the same time, we're seeing extremists crying for rights for the sick, when in reality, there's no hope for them. And I, I think that's been said over and over. That that shouldn't be shocking news. It shouldn't be new to everybody. It's it's out there. And if you go to any place other than turning on your television set or turning on your radio, you're going to see that input given over and over again. The only place it's being repeated is in news outlets. And, and even if you believe that these people aren't undead, you have to know that there's no help. There's no treatment for rabies or prion diseases. That's it. It's over. The next step is death. But that that would be humane for these people. And the government, they, they can't, they simply can't say it. They can't be heard publicly asking people to kill other people or even at best let them die. That They can't do that. They've never been able to do that. Whenever we've had a point where somebody looks over and says the logical thing to do is defend yourself from somebody attacking you, and you never hear them say, en engage the threat or go against that person. You just simply hear them say, cower in a corner someplace or hide under a desk like shooting fish in a barrel, pretty much. That, that is their directive, and they're doing it I'm going to say it just to cover their own asses. That's what we're hearing from them. And that's what I think is happening. And it's clear. The information here that shows that the government was not only aware that this was a terminal illness, but it was willfully allowing it to grow and fester through inaction or inactivity or just not getting the information out. Just following this narrative that they wrote. That the police and paramedics were told to go into these areas and now a lot of them are, are dead. They, they didn't, they came back, everybody said they were fine, they treated wounds and they did stuff and instead they died post to these encounters. The day, two days after everything happened, they were, they were either found dead or infected. And we're already hearing that the death toll post contact with these uh, pack victims, it's upwards of somewhere in the 20 percentile range. It's crazy. Before that, it didn't even equal a percent. Uh, and, and that's a number I, I never even considered looking at before today. That, that means we took an irrelevant number and due to government inactivity now made it relevant. So they last year, to put it in context, 69 officers died in the line of duty. And this year, well, we... <sighs> We may not even have a number. That's how high it is. I mean, we we could we could be looking right now at anywhere between 2,000 and 20,000 of close to the 700,000 officers we have in the U.S. and they're gone. And it's changing so fast that the data is probably expired by now. These are people that uh, probably 48 hours ago or even a week ago had been just regular in the line of duty just life was normal and then to be charged into this with no warning no preparation told to treat people and told them that they were simply uh, victims of either some sort of bad food which was the first line we were given and then second that they were drug interactions so we're basically going in to help fentanyl addicts and none of that was true. It wasn't even close. That these people that were supposedly sitting there like statues or were just messed up out of their mind, they were sitting there looking up and they were encountering them, coming in and doing their job to help people. And they're not with us anymore. I don't know of any place other than 9-11 that anything like this has even come close. And everybody asked if that was an inside job. And you know what? I... I that's nothing. That's going to, when this is all over, it's going to be nothing in the number scheme compared to what's happened. So, and dare I say, this was supposed to be a virus. But is it unleashed on the population? Maybe something that was supposed to be used against our enemies? Was it something grown in the lab? Can we even trust what we're told when we're told it? 
now they're using these opportunities to build I'm going to say concentration camps. The, the, in the guise of shelters, but the ones they're building in the desert, those aren't shelters, are they? And the one in Georgia where we were hearing that they had sit, sent truckloads of sick individuals from shelters into makeshift tents and literally nothing came out. Is that what they call re-education today? That's what it feels like to me. And I think that people normally that were being told that there were conspiracy theories are now starting to question. I've had people, I mean, I'm not one to be a conspiracy theorist, and the people that were talking to me before weren't, and then there were people that were, that were saying stuff to me, and I have to say, I'm actually starting to believe it. The idea that if we lost entire town workforces of police officers, what does that mean for the population? How many of the population have we lost in the last two days at most and we don't even know when that information was released that it came out maybe we just got lucky on it and we just don't know we just know that it isn't what we're being told and I just none of this information should be too shocking to anybody either and some are saying it's it's a move to keep the sitting president in power to divert the, from the election uh, in a few months that the truth is there are many areas where an election isn't going to happen and that's a guarantee it's a, it's going to be virtually impossible to have any sort of vote from georgia uh this is i mean we're talking about closing everything down pennsylvania is next on that list new york is uh probably moments from a lockdown right now and even reports in california especially in South, San Francisco, where people are being exterminated. That They're saying that they're going through the homeless and exterminating people that do not meet criteria, that somehow these hired operatives, I'm just going to call it, have gone through, and there is nothing that, they, they, basically if they're iffy, that they've dealt with them, and they've done this in a way to keep themselves separate from any sort of litigation down the road if it were to happen. In other words, plausible deniability. They said for these guys to do this, and this is what they did. And this news keeps getting worse. North Carolina that said they had things well in hand. Well, they, they don't. Not even in close. So if this isn't shocking you, then you are numb. You should know what these things are happening. But the news is not getting the information out fast enough. And we're following this narrative that is mind-numbing. The differences of sometimes people saying not to worry about certain things this is like seeing a gigantic tsunami or a meteor coming from space and being told don't bother to look at it just it, it's not there it, it's not happening these things are not bad you just it, we have everything fully under control everybody just take the action that you need to take and that doesn't make any sense to me and I, I'm thinking at this point people are going to be fleeing cities they're going to be getting out of any area that is hustle and bustle they're going to be moving into the countryside or at least trying to get to safer areas and what does that mean for areas that these guys are come come what's that okay guys you aren't going to believe this we're hearing that we're being taken off the air that they i'm seeing cops right here right now they're ready to, they're trying to shut down the channel and i don't know what the problem is and no you guys can't just stay out there where I'm not I'm in the middle of my show right now and I'm going to complete it whether you guys like it or not no I'm not unlocking the door not for you not for anybody you ever heard of you know the Bill of Rights that's something that we have here so beat it yeah I'm going to finish my broadcast T Ken tell them to beat it I'm done with this I'll get this out with Usually are faithful, we discuss the power of righteous thought. But today we understand the flock has worries. We see the pestilence reaching across the earth and words like the end of days has been spoken. If I were not a man of faith, I would worry too. But be of peace. The Bible teaches us to worry not and rejoice.
to believe that God has things well under control, and he does. The faithful shouldn't ask. Is the end near? But have their souls in order always for when it is to come. As Jesus said, he comes as a thief in the night. Still, I can understand that fear is a human feeling and we must address it. And with the things I've been seeing, I was taken to Revelation 9-6. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. And shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Truly, we live in trying times. Times in which evil has permeated this world where men lie with men and thieves go free. With suicides rising to epic levels, justice and mercy are bereft from this world. The faithful are made to suffer, and suffer we have for far too long. But God, like he did for the Jews, brings plague down on the evil that permeates our world. The cities will fall first, and those who have fallen shortly after the evil will follow. Have faith, children, that revelations was not the end for the chosen, that you should be delivered from it. It was the promise that we should rise anew with a new body. So these two plagues shall pass. Reverend Cornelius swears it. I do believe, my friends, that the times of revelations are upon us. The plagues, just like Egypt, have befallen the sinners. A time of wars and rumors of war. A time when a third of the sea will die and give up its fishes and the moon will become as blood. Have we not heard? Have we not seen? Do you know the prophecy? How do we face these times with with prayer and strength that God will provide and that God will find a way. But remember that God helps those to help themselves. So take action and see it through and have faith that God will provide. Scientists and politicians, people have put their faith in these men and they seek to deceive us. But man gives us no solace. Only through the word can we find redemption. So for those that believe your way is the way of life, don't be foolish. This is not the way. Repent while you still have a chance. You have sex out of wedlock. You kill your unborn children. You have man-on-man -man relations, same-sex marriage. How do you think God will judge you? Well, friends, now you know. When there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth.